Well, welcome, Central Trinity family and friends. It is so good to be with you this morning. I'm Pastor Steve Judson, looking forward to what God is going to do during our time of worshiping together. Hey, I want to give you one quick reminder that we will be receiving communion uh, a little bit later in the service, kind of toward the end. So if you want and have not already prepared uh, some juice and some bread for you to be able to participate in that, uh, be encouraged to do so. Hey, let me open our time together today in prayer. God, thank you so much for the opportunity and the privilege to be together, to share your love and to experience your presence in our lives. God, to be encouraged and inspired in our relationship with you and just to spend some time drawing close to you. We look forward to this time. We ask that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, that we might experience your presence in even a fresh and new way that encourages us during this time. God spurs us on in our lives for you. We just offer this time. We look forward to it. And we offer and pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.
please join us in our opening hymn, Open My Eyes That I May See. this time, please be invited to join together in reciting our affirmation of faith, the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. May we take a few moments to go to God to stay in prayer. I want to invite you to take a few moments of personal and private prayer yourself or your family right there in your home, wherever you are viewing this from. And then I will offer up a prayer and then invite you to join in closing that prayer with the Lord's Prayer. May we pray.
God, hear our prayers. Hear the pleas and cries of our hearts. We lift up our requests and our praise and thanks, knowing that you are there with us and that you give us strength. God, we pray for uh, your blessing upon our lives. We pray, God, for strength in the midst of these turbulent times. We pray, God, for, uh, for our leaders and for decisions that are made. And we pray, God, that you would give us the ability to maintain a positive outlook, trusting in you, knowing that you will see us through. And praying, God, that you will work in many, many ways for your glory and for good, even in the midst of that which we currently are experiencing. God, be with our church as we uh, continue to creatively find ways to reach out and to share your love with others, uh, whether that's through an online worship experience or whether that's through uh, phone calls to God, those who deeply need to be reminded that you have not abandoned them and that you love them. Maybe that's an encouragement of a coworker, or maybe that's just simply offering prayer for a friend. God, may we find ways to reach out, and we look forward to to being able, hopefully not too long, far from now, uh, to come back together in person and to continue to celebrate your love uh, and, and all that you mean in our lives. Uh, we truly do have so much to be thankful and grateful for, and we honor and praise you for that. God, in these moments of prayer, we also come together and, and join together in praying that prayer that Jesus taught us to pray that we know of as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, welcome back to our current spring message series here at Central Trinity on faith, which according to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 1 in the Bible is defined as being confident in what we hope for and sure of what we do not see. Now, if you've been with us over these past couple of weeks or so, you may remember that the goal of this series of messages is to grow a God-sized faith, which will allow us through our relationship with Christ to experience renewed vitality, joy, and even excitement in our lives. And then because of us, to see that joy and peace and fulfillment of God also experienced by others. Well, today's message is titled, Really Big Thinking, and will focus on the importance of catching God's vision of what he wants to do in us and even through us. So beginning in us, but then also extending through us to the world around us, our family and friends, our coworkers, friends at school, church, in the community, and even beyond. But what does really big thinking even look like? What does that mean, Steve? What is it? And how does it bring to pass a greater experience of God's presence and power and peace, no matter the obstacles that we may face along the way? Uh, well, Think of it this way. How does my thinking impact my ability to experience peace in challenging times? Or joy in the midst of heartache? Or even to carry out some wonderful plan that God has placed within me uh, in the face of some sort of opposition? Maybe that's internal opposition in our own struggle, or maybe that's external opposition of something that God is placing upon your heart. The Bible teaches that we were made in the image of God, that, that the characteristics that identify God are also found in us. Now, one of those is creativity, imagination, the ability to dream and vision and imagine what God wants to do in and through our lives. In fact, it could even be argued that we are most like our creator when we are being creative. Think of God's imagination at coming up with these crazy and complex things called human beings. Then this incredible world and universe. What a creative God. And in order to experience the full breadth of what the Bible refers to as the abundant life, a life of meaning and purpose, of satisfaction and confidence, of peace and joy, we have to catch a vision, a creative vision of how God wants to work in us to bring that hope and peace and joy and again working through us to extend it into the lives even of those around us. In the Bible, God gave Abraham a dream when God told Abraham that he was going to be the father of a great nation, that his descendants would number more than the stars. And he told Abraham to go out and look in the sky and see how many stars there were. That was God getting Abraham to dream big, to do some really big thinking about what God wanted to do in and through him. God told Noah that he would build a great ark. God told Moses that he would lead God's people out of slavery into the promised land. Those are all examples of God trying to get his people to do some creative thinking about the way that God wanted to work in their lives if they would follow his leading. Now, I believe that today's message could make a major difference in your life if you will let God creatively expand the way that you think about everything, your hidden struggles, your personal and painful relationships, anxieties and fear, even your relationship with God and the strength and peace that it brings you. And we're going to look at four key truths about really big thinking that, that I pray will encourage you to open up to even greater ways that God wants to work in and through your life. First key truth about really big thinking, really big thinking, God's style of thinking shapes my life. It shapes my life. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, vision, imagination, has the ability to positively impact the course of my entire life. As a follower of Jesus, whether it's about carrying out some big plan that God's placed within me, or overcoming fear and hurt and doubts within me, 
If I can begin to catch a vision from God about a better place to which God wants to lead me, I may actually have the courage to trust him to get me there. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 23 states, Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Another translation of this same verse goes, Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. Now, sometimes when we read a verse like this, we think of, think of it as a warning to be cautious about keeping the bad thoughts out. But it's just as important to let the good thoughts that God places within us in. Some of those thoughts that God wants us to let in are those dreams and visions about places that God wants to take us, things that God wants to do within us. Now, that may be some big plan that God wants to use you to change the world, but perhaps for you, it's more about God's loving desire to give you victory over some inner struggle that's dragging you down and robbing you of God's joy and peace. Now, it's really interesting in the story from the Old Testament of the Tower of Babel, that even though God condemns what the people are doing, he points to the potential that has been placed within human beings. Let's look together at Genesis chapter 11 and verses 5 through 7. But the Lord came down to the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. Now, in this instance, what they were doing was not pleasing to God, and so he put a stop to it. However, God saw that they had a vision to do something that they felt was great, that they were doing some really big thinking, and as a result, according to God, there was nothing that they could not accomplish. And I wonder if our struggle to overcome the challenges in our lives and live up to the potential, potential that God has placed within us may sometimes be due to our failure to tap into the creativity of the God who gives us the ability to dream and vision where he wants to take us, the powerful ways that he wants to work in and through our lives to bless us. So often we settle for less than what God created us to be what I believe he longs for us to be. Well, in addition to shaping my life, the second key truth about really big thinking is that it is essential to a life of faith. It is essential to a life of faith, essential to living for Jesus fully. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 says, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal or lasting. If our faith, our joy, our peace, our satisfaction, our victory over struggle, the ability to accomplish great feats for God, if our faith is based not on what we see, the impediments and challenges of this world, but on a hope in which we cannot currently see the power and presence of God, how can we as followers of Jesus not be people of great imagination, of great vision? We cannot truly live for Jesus. We cannot live a God-sized faith and accomplish God-sized dreams and vision without really big thinking. Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18 states that where there is no vision, the people perish, the people languish, the people experience less than that for which God created them. Yet when God-sized faith, the kind of faith that allows God's desires to come to pass in our lives and our world, when that kind of faith is present in our lives and in our world, then God's work gets done. God's peace is experienced. God's joy is received. Fear and doubt are defeated, and God's will is carried out. South African writer, teacher, and pastor Andrew Murray, who lived in the 1800s and firmly believed that the missions, uh, uh, that missions and evangelism, you know, sharing and spreading the faith, was the chief end of the church, once said, faith expects from God what is beyond all expectation. 
Let me say that again. Faith, God-sized faith, expects from God what is beyond all expectation. And if you expect to see God work powerfully in your life, that really big thinking that's been made possible in you through the God who created you must be an essential part of who you are. Third key truth about really big thinking. Really big thinking requires a life of faith. It requires a life of faith. So not only is really big thinking essential to living fully for Jesus, but seeking Jesus with all my heart will actually help me become a really big thinker. My relationship with Jesus Christ will assist me in dreaming and visioning the kind of dreams and visions that come from God. Remember, God is a God of imagination and creativity, and we have been created in the likeness with the characteristics of our Creator. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 18, Paul says to the Christians in the city of Ephesus, I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened or opened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in the saints. And the implication here is that it is God who opens the eyes of the heart. So the closer my relationship with God, the deeper I go in my life with God, the greater capacity I have to creatively dream and vision what God wants to do in and through me. So does this mean that only Christians come up with great ideas? Well, no, of course not. The ability to dream and vision, a.k.a. creativity and imagination, is something that God has given to all human beings simply by the fact that we have been made in God's likeness, given similar characteristics. However, I would add that my relationship with God through Jesus Christ gives me the ability to tap into something, a power, if you will, that comes from God that is even greater and stronger than I would otherwise have access to. And as followers of Jesus, in a relationship with God, God has made a way for us to do that. In John chapter 14 and verses 15 through 17, Jesus said, that if we obey what he has commanded us, if we obey what he has taught us in God's word, that, that God will give us a counselor, a comforter, the source of real truth, the Holy Spirit, God's spirit, to live in us and be with us and guide us and provide for us. In Isaiah chapter 50 and verse 4 in the Bible, we find these words. The sovereign Lord wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being instructed. In other words, every day God wakens me a little more to a greater understanding as I listen to him. Sounds to me like Isaiah started out each day with personal devotions, a quiet time with God each morning in prayer and in God's word, which then placed God's understanding and desires and dreams within him. Yes, we need that strong connection to God to fuel our imagination, to plant those dreams and visions within us, to give us hope that we can overcome the challenges in life. Yet it's going to be pretty hard to hear from God and develop that really big thinking if you're not listening, if you're not doing the things that allow you to hear him. Keep the lines of communication open between you and God. It will fuel your imagination. It will help us become really big thinkers. And then the fourth key truth about really big thinking, this is really important. Really big thinking is almost always bigger than I am naturally inclined to think. Really big thinking, the kind that comes from God, is almost always bigger than I am naturally inclined to think. Remember the quote from Andrew Murray earlier. Faith expects from God what is beyond all expectation. So God-sized faith can't help but dream big dreams from God and vision, great visions from God about what God wants to do in our lives and the ways that he wants to work through our lives to make a difference in our world and in the lives of others. In fact, God-sized faith tries to imagine even more than we would normally imagine. 
Ephesians chapter 3 and verses 20 and 21. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Yes, God desires that we experience the kind of faith that can move mountains. The kind that leads to really big thinking, filled with imagination and vision from the heart of God that will bring victories in our lives, pleasure and greater joy, allow us to experience that abundant life and see us make a more powerful and positive difference in our world in the name of Jesus. And it begins by catching a vision from God that will almost always be bigger than we are naturally inclined to think or dream or vision. I came across a powerful quote as I was preparing for this message. To achieve something you've never had before, you must do something you've never done before. To achieve something you've never had before, you must do something you've never done before. God wants us to do some really big thinking because really big thinking will shape my life forever. Really big thinking is essential to following Jesus fully. It requires seeking Jesus completely, and it is almost always bigger than I am normally inclined to think. My prayer today is that we will all dream big dreams, vision great visions that come from God, and experience some really big thinking that allows God to impact our lives in powerful ways providing victory over our struggles, peace in the midst of chaos, joy even in the storms, and which will be a blessing not only to us, but to all those whose paths we cross as we live our lives and seek to be the light of Christ to our world. God does the work, but it begins with vision. You desire a God-sized faith that will lead to really big thinking, that will bless your life and give you victory and further God's plan for our world to impact the lives of others. I want to invite you to pray with me. Dear God, we thank you for just the privilege to have spent some time together and drawing from your word. We thank you for the way that encourages us, inspires us, and even challenges us to be all that you have created us to be. Help us, God, to seek to truly tap deeply into our relationship with you. To draw on you, to dream big, to vision big, to creatively imagine, God, how you want to work in our lives to bring victory, to bring peace, to bring joy. And God, through us, even to impact the world in hearts, minds, and lives around us. God, give us this day, your strength, your vision, your dreams. God, give us the courage to trust you, to see them lived out in our lives and our world. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. And the people of God said, Well, it is always a joy to be able to receive a communion together and to remember what Christ did in order that we might experience uh, the dreams and visions of God with all the wonderful ways that he wants to work in our lives. In order for us to be able to tap into that, uh, Jesus had to give his life uh, in order for us to experience forgiveness and to be able to be brought into a relationship with a perfect and holy God. So we remember this day in which Jesus was gathered with his closest followers and friends that we know of as the disciples. And they were celebrating the last, or celebrating the, the Passover and uh, that uh, just the, the Jewish um, special time each year when they would remember how God had miraculously worked for their people in, in, in their past. And in the midst of that very special and very powerful, even intimate time, uh, that they had together. The Bible says that Jesus took bread and, and he, he prayed over it. He gave God thanks for it. You may have rehearsed, uh, you know, shared how 
reminded them how God had worked amazingly through their people's past. And then the Bible says that Jesus took bread and, and he took that bread and he broke. He gave it to those that were gathered and he says, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. As often as you receive this, do so in remembrance of me. And then following the meal, the Bible says that Jesus took a cup. He blessed it and uh, he, he thanked God for it and, 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 and shared it with those that he was gathered with that night. And he said, take and drink. For this is my blood shed for you and for the forgiveness of many. As often as you receive this, do so in remembrance of me. I'm going to invite you to just hold on receiving, and if you've got those elements there, kind of get those around where you're at, uh, and then to spend a few moments during this special music to reflect on God's love and goodness and presence in your life.
And now we receive together the symbolic body and blood of Christ who reminds us of God's incredible love and all that has been done for us. Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat now in the name. Jesus said, take and drink this my blood shed for you in remembrance. God, we give you so much praise and thanks for who you are and by your grace and what Jesus accomplished for us, whose we are. We thank you for this moment and we thank you, God, for that which it fills our hearts, minds, and spirits with. God, we are amazingly want to share our love for you. And amazingly, in this moment, we receive your love for us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please join us in our closing hymn, Take My Life and Let It Be. And now go in the name of him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and ever. Amen. Be blessed this week because of Jesus.